Good morning. Welcome to St. Michael the Archangel Catholic Church. Thank you for your presence with us. If you wish to make a donation to St. Michael the Archangel, we invite you to use the blue envelopes in the pew and place it in the collection basket. By doing this, it will ensure that your entire donation will remain with the parish. As we prepare for the Mass, we would like everyone to please silence your cell phones. Today we celebrate the 14th Sunday in Ordinary Time. Our presenter today is our pastor, Father Michael Cannon. And now please rise and join us in our open hymn number 806. Love divine, all loves excelling. Number 806. I confess to Almighty God and to you, my brothers and sisters, that I have greatly sinned in my thoughts and in my words, in what I have done and in what I have failed to do, 
through my fault, through my fault, through my most grievous fault. Therefore I ask, Blessed Mary, ever-Virgin, all the angels and saints, and you, my brothers and sisters, to pray for me to the Lord our God. May Almighty God have mercy on us, forgive us our sins, and bring us to everlasting life. Lord have, mercy. Lord, have mercy. Christ, have mercy. Lord, have mercy. Christ, have mercy. Lord, have mercy. Glory to God in the highest. Say to me, Son of man, I am sending you to the Israelites, rebels who have rebelled against me. They and their ancestors have revolted against me to this very day. Hard of face and obstinate of heart are they to whom I am sending you. But you shall say to them, Thus says the Lord God, and whether they heed or resist, for they are a rebellious house, they shall know that a prophet has been among them. The word of the Lord. Thanks be to God.
second letter of St. Paul to the Corinthians. Brothers and sisters, that I, Paul, might not become too elated because of the abundance of the revelations. A thorn in the flesh was given me, an angel of Satan, to beat me, to keep me from being too elated. Three times I begged the Lord about this, that it might leave me. But he said to me, my grace is sufficient for you. For power is made perfect in weakness. I will rather boast most gladly of my weaknesses in order that the power of Christ may dwell with me. Therefore, I am content with weaknesses, insults, hardships, persecutions, and constraints. For the sake of Christ, for when I am weak, then I am strong. The word of the Lord. Thanks. When the Sabbath came, he began to teach in the synagogue, and many who heard him were astonished. They said, Where did this man get all this? What kind of wisdom has been given him? What mighty deeds are wrought by his hands? Is he not the carpenter, the son of Mary, and the brother of James and Joseph, and Judas and Simon? And are not his sisters here with us? And they took offense at him. Jesus said to them, A prophet is not without honor, except in his native place, and among his own kin, and in his own house. So he was not able to perform any mighty deeds there, apart from curing a few sick people by laying his hands on them. He was amazed at their lack of faith. My friends, the Gospel of the Lord. Praise to you, Lord Jesus Christ. 
The sign in the front yard read, Talking Dog for Sale. A prospective buyer asked to see the dog. The owner sent him to the backyard where the black Labrador retriever was sitting on the lawn. You talk? The man asked. Yep, the lab replied. So what's your story? The dog told of his amazing undercover career with the CIA, eavesdropping in high places, countless secret missions, and so much more. The man went back to the owner and asked the price. Ten bucks, he said. Why so cheap? Because he's a liar, the owner said. He never did any of that spy stuff. <laughs> a little humor to begin. The people of Nazareth in today's gospel story couldn't believe any of that stuff about their local boy, Jesus, either. As we heard, the people gave him a rather shabby welcome. Mark tells us that they took offense at him. We heard Jesus' response. A prophet is not without honor, except in his native place, and among his own kin, and in his own house. In our first reading, Ezekiel the prophet experienced the same issue. His own people rejected him. It appears that his people had gone away from God, and Ezekiel is attempting to draw them back, first into repentance, but they're unwilling to listen. In the text following the one that we read today, Ezekiel is told that his task will be extremely difficult, like sitting among scorpions, the author writes. And then St. Paul in our second reading from, uh, is addressing the Christian community at Corinth. And this was a church that appears that was besieged by false prophets who were boasting of their ecstasies, their visions, their miracles. And Paul tells the people that whenever he was tempted to become proud like these false prophets, he was always knocked down a notch by what he described as a thorn in the flesh. Now what exactly this thorn in the flesh um, meant, we don't know, and as we know, uh, Paul is no longer around to tell us. But it's not the malady or whatever this uh, thing was. It's not the malady, but what Paul does with the thorn in the flesh that's important. Paul tells us that the power of Christ dwelt in him and told him, my grace is sufficient for you. For power is made perfect in weakness. My grace is sufficient for you. For power is made perfect in weakness. Paul was not perfect. Yet God used him for great things. Prophets like Ezekiel and Paul were sent by God as messengers. Jesus himself as well. Many laughed at them and refused to listen. Now a little exercise for a moment. I want everyone to consider the person who came to church with you today. Or if you came alone, think of someone significant in your life. A question. Does she or he look like someone to speak God's word for your life to you? Does he or she look holy enough? Could God use this person to speak to me or to speak to you? Many of us might kind of secretly say, well, I, I, I don't really think so. Like, that's my spouse, my, my partner. My father, my mother, my, my child, my friend, my neighbor. Too young. Too old. Too familiar. Not educated enough. Wasn't that exactly 
why Jesus found rejection in today's gospel story. Where did this man get all this, they asked. What kind of wisdom has been given him? Is he not the carpenter, the son of Mary? And we heard his response. No prophet is without honor, except in his native place, and among his own kin, and in his own house. Too ordinary, too familiar. And it happens more often than one might think. I shared a little story before about Bishop Fulton Sheen. And it was a story that, that uh, Bishop Sheen used to tell on himself. And it happened uh, um, at the time when he was becoming well known as a television evangelist. One day, he was returning to his home diocese of Peoria in Illinois. Many of you are probably aware that Bishop Sheen wasn't particularly tall in stature, even though he looked taller on television. But on this particular occasion, a crowd of people gathered at the train station to get a glimpse of him on his arrival. One woman, who considered herself quite a fan, was apparently quite disappointed at how small and unimportant he looked. And so she approached him and said, if I had known that that's all there was of you, I wouldn't have bothered coming all this way to see you. The same story. Bishop Sheen was too small and looked unimportant in her view. God continues to send messengers dressed like you and like me with flaws and imperfections, but God uses them nonetheless. And I always throw a question to myself at the end of my homilies. And the question I threw to myself on completion was, when was the last time I was truly aware of God's voice coming from someone close to me? I knew when was the last time you were aware of God's message from someone familiar to you? stand as we profess our faith. I believe in one God, the Father Almighty, maker of heaven and earth, of all things visible and invisible. I believe in one Lord Jesus Christ, the only begotten Son of God, born of the Father before all ages, God from God, light from light, true God from true God. Begotten, not made, consubstantial with the Father. Through him all things were made. For us and for our salvation he came down from heaven, and by the Holy Spirit was incarnate of the Virgin Mary and became man. For our sake he was crucified under Pontius Pilate. He suffered death and was buried, and rose again on the third day in accordance with the Scriptures. He ascended into heaven and is seated at the right hand of the Father. He will come again in glory to judge the living and the dead, and his kingdom will have no end. I believe in the Holy Spirit, the Lord, the giver of life, who proceeds from the Father and the Son, who with the Father and the Son is adored and glorified, who has spoken through the prophets. I believe in one holy, catholic, and apostolic church. I confess one baptism for the forgiveness of sins, 
and I look forward to the resurrection of the dead and the life of the world to come. Amen. We live in a world needing truth and reconciliation. With eyes fixed on the Lord our God, we call upon God's immense mercy. That all members of the church come to embrace their call to be prophets in the world. We pray to the Lord. Lord, hear our prayer. That our civic leaders work in unison to build a just society where the good of all is sought. We pray to the Lord. Lord, hear our prayer. That we all may be given the grace to persevere with love when confronted with demanding situations or people. We pray to the Lord. Lord, hear our prayer. That our building committee will have continued success as we move forward with our ministry center project. We pray to the Lord. Lord, hear our prayer. For those who have died in faith, that they may find eternal rest in the loving embrace of God, especially Isabella Mason, we pray to the Lord. Lord, hear our prayer. For Betty and El Scala and Henrietta Neblud, whom we are remembering in a special way in this Eucharist, we pray to the Lord. Lord, hear our prayer. For the intentions of the parish prayer line, the intentions in the parish prayer boxes, and our own special intentions. We pray to the Lord. Lord, hear our prayer. Loving God, you fill your people with joy by raising them up and giving them hope. May you hear and answer our prayers this day according to your will. We ask this through Christ our Lord.
Pray, my brothers and sisters, that my sacrifice and yours may be acceptable to God, our Almighty Father. May this oblation, dedicated to your name, purify us, O Lord, and day by day bring our conduct closer to the life of heaven through Christ our Lord. Amen. The Lord be with you. Amen. Lift up your hearts. Amen. And let's give thanks to the Lord our God. Amen. It is truly right and just, our duty and our salvation, always and everywhere to give you thanks, Lord, Holy Father, Almighty and Eternal God, through Christ our Lord. For out of compassion, for the waywardness that is ours, he humbled himself and was born of the Virgin. By the passion of the cross, he freed us from unending death, and by rising from the dead, he gave us life eternal. And so with angels and archangels, with thrones and dominions, and with all the hosts and powers of heaven, we sing the hymn of your glory, as without end we acclaim, By the power and working of the Holy Spirit, you give life to all things and make them holy. And you never cease to gather a people to yourself, so that from the rising of the sun to its setting, a pure sacrifice may be offered to your name. Therefore, O Lord, we humbly implore you, by the same Spirit, graciously make holy these gifts we have brought to you for consecration that they may become the body and blood of your Son, our Lord Jesus Christ, at whose command we celebrate these mysteries. For on the night he was betrayed, he himself took bread, and giving you thanks, he said the blessing, broke the bread, and gave it to his disciples, saying, Take this, all of you, and eat of it, for this is my body which will be given up for you. In a similar way, when supper was ended, he took the chalice, and giving you thanks, he said the blessing, and gave the chalice to his disciples, saying, Take this, all of you, and drink from it, for this is the chalice of my blood, the blood of the new and eternal covenant, which will be poured out for you and for many for the forgiveness of sins. Do this in memory of me. The mystery of
celebrate the memorial of the saving passion of your Son, his wondrous resurrection and ascension into heaven. And as we look forward to his second coming, we offer you in thanksgiving this holy and living sacrifice. Look, we pray, upon the oblation of your church and recognizing the sacrificial victim by whose death you will to reconcile us to yourself. Grant that we who are nourished by the body and blood of your Son and filled with his Holy Spirit may become one body, one spirit in Christ. May he make of us an eternal offering to you so that we may obtain an inheritance with your life, especially with the most blessed Virgin Mary, Mother of God, the blessed Joseph, her spouse, with your blessed apostles and glorious martyrs, with St. Michael, the archangel, and with all the saints on whose constant intercession in your presence we you rely for unfailing help. May this sacrifice of our reconciliation, we pray, O Lord, advance the peace and salvation of all the world. Be pleased to confirm in faith and charity your pilgrim church on earth with your servant Francis our Pope and Frank our Bishop, the order of bishops, all the clergy, and the entire people you have gained for your own. Listen graciously to the prayers of this family whom you have summoned before you. In your compassion, O merciful Father, gather to yourself all your children scattered throughout the world. To our departed brothers and sisters, and to all who are pleasing to you at their passing from this life, give kind admittance to your kingdom. There we hope to enjoy forever the fullness of your glory. Through Christ our Lord, to whom you bestow in the world all that is good. Through him and with him and in him, O God Almighty Father, in the unity of the Holy Spirit, all glory and honor is yours forever. Jesus Christ. Lord Jesus Christ, who said to your apostles, Peace I leave you, my peace I give you. Look not on our sins, but on the faith of your church, and graciously grant her peace and unity in accordance with your will, who live and reign forever and ever. And may the peace of the Lord be with each of you. We offer each other a sign of Christ's peace.
And we have a blessing, we have a, a practice rather of offering a blessing to any little ones who have yet to receive First Holy Communion. I think we have one or two with us this morning and we want to come forward for a blessing. Here we are. That's a long way up, isn't it? As I always say, it's wonderful to have a lot of little ones to bless, and thanks to mommies and daddies and whoever else brought them, it's a, it's a joy. So now let us stand and pray. Grant, we pray, O Lord, that having been replenished by such great gifts, we may gain the prize of salvation and never cease to praise you through Christ our Lord. Amen. Just uh, one announcement, and that is that um, the uh, registration for religious education and family formation classes for the 2024-25 uh, school year has be begun. So um, if you need to have paperwork uh, completed, you, you can uh, feel free to contact Anna Chase, our coordinator of religious instruction or uh, call the parish office. There are details uh, in the bulletin. And, I, uh, uh, and I, for those of you who may not be aware of it, I've been uh, uh, out for the past number of weeks and my father was unwell so I went home. But uh, thanks to the prayers and the support of so many of you, he has, uh, he has uh, come back to us, he has recovered and he's well on the road and so I would just like to take this opportunity and from him as well, he told me last night to tell Everyone that he really appreciated your prayers, your support, and um, and uh, he uh, he certainly uh, wanted me to uh, to acknowledge that to you and uh, for myself as well. So thank you. How many of you are visiting us this morning? Well, you you're not visitors any longer. <laughs> but uh, well, thank you for uh, thank you for being with us. It's uh, so nice to. Uh, to see so many. Usually uh, during the summer the, the masses are quite empty but uh, thank you for helping us fill the seats, uh, fill the seats this morning. It's, uh, it's a joy to be able to, uh, to host you. And of course Father Ruiz, thank you for celebrating with me this morning. I wish you many blessings. The Lord be with you. May Almighty God bless you, the Father, the Son and the Holy Spirit. Our Mass is ended. We go in peace to love, to serve the Lord. And have a blessed week, everyone. Thank you. And our closing hymn is number 692, Christ Be Our Light, number 692.
like your hair. What do you do? A lot. A lot. When do you leave this week?